Hey there, besties. Thank you for stopping by. I am Michonne Denise, and we're going to continue with the what is a food desert? So there's more to this. It ain't over yet, y'all. It ain't over yet. Walmart declined to comment on the article. They took away Walmart and there was no warning or option. You know, like if you're going to take away something, why not replace with something else? Like if the city knew that they were going to take away Walmart, why not bring a, a farmer's market to the neighborhood and have the farmer's market there, you know, every day of the summer for two hours? That's because uh, no one wants to come there. That's the problem because of all the difficulties. But it's not Walmart's job to tell anyone what they are and aren't going to do and then say this is a suitable replacement either. So this is when your politicians, your aldermen, the people that take care of your community that go to Congress and the Senate to help you, that's where you should be directing these things at, not at Walmart. That's who you should be talking to. But for some reason, we don't talk to the, uh, the politicians. We just sit around and complain about what other businesses and companies who are in it for profit, we just worry about what they're doing and say that they're wrong. Or be more consistent with options that are here. Something could have been done on the part of the city as well as on the part of the big corporations that are coming in and taking away our food options. No, you're right. You're, it's the city, it's the state, it's the politicians. That's who you should be talking to. Those are the people that will negotiate those things. Like, do you think that you get to go to Walmart and go talk to him? Whoever runs Walmart, do you think you get to go to Target and go talk to them directly? No, you don't. That's what your politicians are for. That's who's failing y'all, but y'all don't want to vote. Y'all don't think it happens about every four years. Then people got to beg black people to vote, go register and do all these things. Every single time it's an election. Y'all be blaming the wrong daggone people. You got people here trying to help you and tell you, and you still want to give people pushback on a hard daggone time. Kroger, America's largest supermarket chain, has also drawn the ire of some customers. In 2019, the company had sales of $122 billion. But critics allege those profits have come at the expense of servicing communities in need. One flashpoint came in 2017 when Kroger decided to close 41 of its 2,800 stores. The Reverend Jesse Jackson called for a national boycott of Kroger locations, claiming that these shutdowns targeted minority neighborhoods. So who, who gonna stop going to Kroger's though? All this, the boycott and stuff, listen, this is not 19 whatever, 60, 40, 50, what is Boycott and Kroger's going to do if Kroger's is taking their business out of the minority neighborhoods? You think that the neighborhoods that they are in after they shut down those 40, you think they're going to stop going there? The odds are that they're not. What needs to happen is, is that people need to work on their communities so that things aren't happening, such as the robberies, uh, reference Aldi, the robberies, the burglaries, the, the, all the other E's. The community needs to work on respecting businesses that come into their developments, their neighborhoods. If they want those people to come into their homes, those businesses to come into their area and service them, then they need to treat them properly. Now, I'm not saying that it's everyone in the Dagon neighborhood that's doing wrong, but it's enough people that are that it is not cost effective for them to remain. That's where the problem lies. So Jesse Jackson running out here again with the racism and white supremacy, basically thinking that boycotting is going to work. How is boycotting going to work when the people that who they're taking the the uh, grocery store out of the the, the neighbor. <clears throat> How is boycotting going to work when the place that the store is being taken out of, those are the people. So what are they going to boycott? They don't have it any daggone way. So that doesn't make sense. You have to do things that make sense. Just because he runs out here and he says, this is what you need to do. Don't mean that that's the right thing to do. Just sit back and think about it for a second. Wherever Kroger is open at, those people are not affected. Why would they stop going to Kroger's? They won't. So this is just talk. It's not going to make any daggone bit of difference. No one takes a step back and thinks. In a statement given to USA Today at the time, Kroger said, quote, because we operate a penny profit business, we must sometimes make tough decisions in order to keep our prices low for all customers. 
Kroger's is probably having the same issues as Aldi did. And no one seems to take into account, just because they make a billion dollars and a trillion dollars, everyone thinks that they should just spend their money any old way, any willy-nilly old way. You can afford it. You should stay. You got money. You should stay. Why is it that you think that you should be able to tell a business who makes profit, who puts money out, who makes those decisions, who pays the cost to be the boss, why do you think that you get to tell them what they should do so that you can have what it is? that you want what are you doing on your end that's what i'm going to keep asking besides whining complaining and blaming outside of that which produces nothing what is your community doing that wants to entice kroger to come in or entice kroger aldi's or whomever and to stay in one of its cincinnati locations for example the company claimed that out of the store's 34 years of operation more than 20 of those were unprofitable it added that the stores were projected to lose another $900,000 if it stayed open that year. Building grocery stores in low-income neighborhoods come with other complications too. One of the challenges as, as public policy changes on both sides of the aisles, like conservatives want to cut back on SNAP, it, it's a killer to food desert supermarkets. On the other hand, you see some more liberal um, cities doing things like beverage taxes or other use taxes, which really are a tax on the poor. And even in the best conditions, grocery stores are generally considered to be cash and debt intensive and only marginally profitable by about one to 2%. So if they're marginally profitable, you're saying that they should take on all the hit and go into the minority areas where they're even going to be less profitable just because it's a minority hit area, even though they're going to come in and be treated like crap, not necessarily make any money, pay out more, it's going to cost them more, which then they do pass that on to the other places that they do give business, but they don't want to raise prices, which is what they said in their statement. Like, make it make sense. We have to take some accountability. We don't take accountability nowhere for nothing. On average, what we discovered, if a supermarket normally makes 1% of sales as a bottom line profit, um, we're finding that the food desert stores lose 4%. And so there's a 5% gap and that's the challenge. And we use public private financing to mitigate about half that gap. While grocery stores largely remain elusive in many of America's food deserts, dollar stores have proliferated. Dollar stores tend to target underserved urban communities that lack full service grocery stores. And their footprint is on the rise in the US. Dollar Tree and Dollar General have expanded 50%. I support that. But if you want more as far as grocery stores, fresh produce and uh, more popular items, I should say, the community has to learn how to treat businesses properly in order for them to come. And they have to make sure that it's profitable. They have to make sure it makes sense. The company doesn't want to have to get uh, uh, metal detectors in order for people to come in just to go grocery shopping. They don't want slip and falls. They don't want fights. They don't want GUN fire. Like they just want people to come in, spend their money and leave. And I don't think that that's too much to ask. Since 2011. And the two chains have indicated that they have plans for an additional 20,000 outlets. But the problem with dollar stores is that they rarely ever offer fresh produce. Instead, Think processed goods that have long shelf life, like cookies and canned meats. There are really no viable food options. And it's crazy to me because people that live literally three to five miles away have two grocery stores. And that just so happens to be in a white neighborhood. Why is it that they have options and I don't? And just because I don't have the money that they have doesn't mean that I shouldn't have the access to food that they have. You have the same access to the food that they have access to. You just have to travel a little further. So the question in my mind is, do you really want the food or do you want to complain? Because honestly, three to five miles does not sound like it's that far. So you could conceivably go to that development, that area, that neighborhood, buy the fresh fruits and vegetables that you need, and then you can go home. It, it, this, if that's the case, then I'm trying to understand what the issue is. So this is a convenience store that is pretty close to my mom's house. And it's one of the only options that we have for food and groceries. Um, they don't have any fresh food. They have a lot of canned and processed stuff. 
it's not the best, but it's kind of like all we have in this community. When it comes to having healthy food options, low-income communities of color have suffered for decades as fresh and affordable food options fled their neighborhoods. In areas where grocery stores are scarce, fast food, carryout, and corner stores may be the only food access option. Like the dollar store, corner stores typically stock highly processed foods and rarely ever offer fresh produce. Research has linked a poor diet to a range of health issues like high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. So are we trying to say that the reason why the black community has poor health is because there's no um, grocery stores in the neighborhoods? Is that what we're trying to say now? Are we actually sitting here trying to say that even if given the option and opportunity to get fresh foods, that that's what black people are buying? I'm going to need this documentary to be honest. Even if you had the daggone store there, they'd still rule of thumb when you go into the grocery store, you do the perimeter of the daggone store and you never go in the middle. How many people go into the middle? That's where all the processed food is. Everything that you should want and need is on the perimeter. That's how grocery stores are made up. So you, so, so this, these people are trying to tell me that the reason why black people are in poor health, and you've seen the people that were walking in this video, that's because they don't have um, grocery stores in the neighborhood. I beg to differ, and I call cap. No. We're not sitting around eating a bunch of broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, mixed vegetables, corn. Stop. Just stop it. Eating salmon. And, and fresh fish, you tell me it's it's not fried chicken and mashed potatoes and, and all this other crazy stuff, the fast food that they were just speaking about, the cereal, the Pop-Tarts, the candies, the cookies. You're telling me it's it's all the food stamps that are given out, all the uh, fresh fruit is what they're getting, fresh fruits and vegetables. I must say that is a lie. An analysis from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention indicate that these conditions disproportionately affect African Americans. So we care about food insecurity from a public health perspective for a lot of different reasons. One is that, as we've talked about, it's very common. So right now it's affecting about a quarter of, of all Americans with higher rates among Black, Hispanic, and low-income populations, and it's expensive. So we're spending about $78 billion um, to address food insecurity through annual health care costs. And it's also the case that if you're food insecure, then you often forego basic needs because you want to purchase food. So people forego things like medications or medical visits, which are obviously very important to health. Communities that have poor access to food also tend to suffer from higher mortality rates. One study of Chicago neighborhoods, for example, found that the death rate from diabetes was twice as high for people who lived in food deserts than those who had adequate access to grocery stores. COVID-19 has exacerbated these health disparities. Conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and hypertension are among the leading underlying health risks that can turn COVID-19 into a death sentence. I want to know when someone is going to come out and say that we're going into the neighborhoods because clearly there's something missing that I'm not seeing. So in Atlanta, they're giving uh, low-income single mothers $800, $850 a month for the next two to three years and just giving it to them. That's it. That's all. No teachings, no uh, thought behind it, nothing to look at when the end of this term comes. They're like, you're poor. Here you go. We're going to toss you some money. Do with it what you want. So you're trying to tell me that those people have good f fiscal responsibility, knowledge. You're trying to tell me that they're going to use those, that to the best of their ability and they're going to pull themselves up out of poverty somehow, some way, because you're giving them free money each month. We are sitting up here saying these things that don't make good God sense. You're telling me that we don't know, we as black people don't know that we have high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, strokes, all those type of things, issues at a higher rate. Are we going to the doctor to discuss these things with the doctor before we get those things? Are we handing that information down to our children so they can know what it is that they potentially have to deal with and teaching them you don't do this, you don't do that? Where is the personal responsibility at where we are accepting 
the fact that we need to go ahead and do something about our own situations instead of always blaming and shaming. It is always someone else's fault. We don't accept responsibility for anything. And then when you try to sit around here and you try to help people, they come at you nastily blaming and calling names and every daggone thing else. That's why I keep saying that there is no help for the community because the community doesn't want to listen to anyone. They would rather blame and whine and complain instead of doing something differently in order to get a different result. This documentary plays straight into that. None of it makes sense to me. Where are the people that go to the daggone neighborhoods that will teach this type of stuff? And when you set that st type of stuff up, who shows up? How many people show up? You could be doing that through the churches. You could be doing that through the schools. Hopefully they're going through the schools. What are they doing at the schools? What type of food is going on at the schools for, for breakfast and um, lunch? Michelle Obama had that program. Where does that stand with that community at this point? Was everyone receptive to it? Or were they like, ew, don't nobody want that. Ew, don't nobody want that. When's the last time that anyone saw their children or grandchildren eating a banana or an apple? Let me say an apple. When was the last time that you saw in, in uh, a black community where they were having uh, fresh vegetables that they just bought from the produce store and they made it fresh, not microwaved it. They put it in a steamer. They made it fresh or it came in a breathable bag. And then they ate that along with something else healthy next to it. Or was it just takeout Chinese food? Fried chicken, same old fries, Pop-Tarts, Captain Crunch. Like we have to accept the fact that we're making these choices as well. And we, if we can spend so much time on the internet, then we can go ahead and spend some time understanding and knowing what the heck it is that we need to eat, how we need to eat, how we need to feed our children, stop giving them juice boxes, stop sending them in front of the daggone um, TV, the PlayStation and the, the phone get them punk asses outside to run around, get them in the programs, teach them about exercise, take them swimming, teach them how to swim, and then teach them how to eat. Those are what parents are supposed to do. They're supposed to teach, not just have kids and complain about them and put them, take pictures and put it online. Where's the teaching at? Where's the teaching and raising of children properly? Not dressing them up, not playing stupid music, not making sure they can rap and twerk. No. These are the things that we're not doing as a community, and that's why we have the problems that we do. But then we want to say that it's Kroger's fault. It is not. It's Walmart's fault. It is not. It's our fault because we don't want to change. This is the same thing over and over and over, and I don't want to hear about white supremacy, racism, slavery, none of that. It is 20 damn, 20 damn two. When are we going to stop this? This is absolute madness and insanity. If you don't know and you don't ask, still on you. Accept responsibility for the decisions that you are making and those consequences as well. But it's the kids that are suffering, the neighborhoods that continue to suffer. And then y'all like that lady is just sitting out here saying it's not fair. It's not fair. But somehow, some way the liquor store remains. Somehow, some way the liquor store remains. But I'm going to leave it at that. I'll come back with a part three. If you made it this far, I do appreciate you. Please consider subscribing to the channel, the backup channel, Instagram, becoming a member. I will see you all in the next one.